Mustache Maniacs Film Co. fans, this is Andrew Bermudez bringing you another exciting episode of Backstage Showcase, where we take an individual character, prop, scene, concept art, or anything like that from our archives, and we really pick it apart to see what went into developing it and why we made certain choices that we did. Today's episode is a very special one because we're going to be talking about one of the very first canon immigrants we've ever introduced in any of our films, or at least online, Johnny Thunder, and specifically how we updated the character to bring him to, to new audiences. Similar to last episode, how I talked about bringing Alpha Team up to the modern day. And for today's episode, I actually have a special guest today. His name is Daniel Bermudez, and he played the part of Johnny Thunder in the three Johnny Thunder movies, as well as the Fan Choice Awards, and the upcoming Johnny Thunder and the Wonders Beneath the Waves, as well as Legends of the Universe. So, how has it been going today? It's been going really good today. How are you doing? Doing good. Uh, okay, so now I want to uh, talk to you about playing the part of Johnny Thunder and also talking about developing the character of Johnny Thunder because you were there instrumental in writing Johnny Thunder in The Secret of Marco Polo. Yes, well, first of all, I didn't invent Johnny Thunder. Lego did. We simply took yes. the uh, product, as it were, the, uh, the character, and adapted it to our own uh, storyline, which again, our first movie, Giant Thunder and the Secret of Marco Polo, is adopted from the Orient Expedition uh, Lego series and webcomic that they had going back in oh, 2003, I want to say? Yes, it was okay. 2003. What I remember is we started writing Giant Thunder and the Secret of Marco Polo back Oh, what was the working title for it? Just Orient Expedition? Like it was comment? something like Orient Expedition, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it was very much going to be a straight up stop motion adaptation of the webcomic which was this 2d animation like flash like you know when you think 2003 internet that that's what it was you know the the kind of the, the, the stiff flash animation it was good don't get me wrong but you know very much a product of its era so um i remember when we were writing it in 2006 i, I believe the very earliest versions was 2004 War, but we didn't really start getting the outline in place until 2005. Yeah, I, I remember it was kind of your idea to adapt adapt it, excuse me, and I kind of got on board with it because I enjoyed the, the, the Lego series and the, the webcomic and just everything went more expedition. I think it's a really solid, quite frankly, underappreciated series that Lego did. So returning to the character of Johnny Thunder... Uh, again, in stark contrast to our interpretation of Alpha Team, for Johnny Thunder, we actually changed a lot about the character. Like, one thing, for example, was that we took the character out of the 1930s, 1920s setting that was in the Lego theme. They never really, they never really established exactly when, but we took Johnny Thunder and the whole story out of that and into the present day. So, Daniel, could you tell us a little bit about reinterpreting Johnny Thunder as a character for modern audiences? Yeah, I think our reinterpretation of Johnny Thunder was very gradual. It wasn't something we just, you know, took and it took the established character and made it our own. Um, I know the one thing we did off the bat was we set it modern day, just because setting in the 1920s and 30s is extremely cliched for adventure films. A lot of our other interpretations, like um, where Johnny's from, his family, and all that, we really kind of just pieced together on our own, like him being married to Pippin. It, his relationship with Pippin was never established in the Lego series, and since we wanted to tell a complete story, we felt we kind of had to not necessarily invent the plot lines, but kind of just put the pieces better together. So another thing I want to talk about was, I know you weren't as involved in this as you were with the initial development of Secret Marco Polo, but one major change that we made was giving Johnny Thunder a family. Like you mentioned, we had now have Johnny Thunder and Pippin as married, but we also made some other adjustments too that were never mentioned in the official Lego storyline. For example, we gave him a daughter named Sarah, and also we talk about Johnny's father, Dr. Daniel Thunder, and his story. So do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think the core thing, and this is my interpretation of this, what our series has become, because when you write something like 
an adventure film or, or really just a film that has this that's very character driven because the Johnny Thunder series yeah it has treasure it has adventure it has you know all the elements of a big blockbuster movie but it is a very much a character driven movies people watch it because they love you know Johnny Thunder battling Lord Sinister Patrick and his silliness uh Harry Kane's silliness, uh, Dr. Kilroy's lectures that no one really listens to. You know, it, it's about the characters, how they interact with each other, and how they interact with the environments around them. Um, I think of one scene that's a really good, I feel is a very good scene that shows that character is when they're in the uh, the hot air balloon on Mount Everest. And I remember writing that scene, and that was a scene that I really was looking forward to writing. It was an exciting aerial action scene. Um, I remembered it from the comics. I really wanted to adapt it, adapt it into the uh, the film, and just that scene kind of wrote itself because we'd already developed the characters at that point in in the pre production stage, like what their personality stuff were going to be, and it kind of wrote itself. I remember that scene. We probably wrote that scene out in probably like an hour or so. I remember we flew through that session really fast. But getting back to Johnny Thunder and his uh, family uh, dynamic. Um, I, I like the idea of giving him a daughter, of uh, having him and Pippin together. It gave him more depth. It gave him, uh, like in the second film especially, more reason to, to, to fight, to stay together. Uh, you know, it wasn't about the treasure. And that's another thing about Johnny Thunder, it, it being a character-driven story, but they themselves being driven by their relationships. It's never really about the treasure. I mean, it is. That's what they're always looking for, the treasure. But it's about them together getting the treasure. It's not about Johnny Thunder getting the treasure. It's not about Dr. Kilroy, you know, getting the treasure so he can lecture about it and no one can listen to him. It's about them, a group of friends, getting together to seek out this adventure. And also, in addition to working on the um, our interpretation of Johnny Thunder, you also played the character in the three Johnny Thunder films, as well as the, like I said, the Fan Choice Awards, and you will be coming back for the upcoming movies. So, what was your experience as playing Johnny Thunder? Well, I never planned on playing Johnny Thunder. Um, I didn't really think about who would play him. I knew how I wanted the character to be portrayed. I just didn't give much thought beyond that. And I remember in the Secret Marco Polo when we were casting and you know finding people to do voice acting. And everyone who tried out for Johnny Thunder, you know, they either didn't have the Australian accent, you know, not to say that mine's that great, but it just wasn't quite, you know, grasping what I wanted, what we wanted, uh, more specifically me, because that was the like, one character that I wrote that I was, you know, was a huge deal to me. <laughs> um, so I finally, I think it just kind of boiled down to like, you know, let me just go for it, see what happens. And I did, um, and people seemed to like it, so we just kind of ran from there. Now, uh, we're running a little long here, so I want to wrap up with just one more question. And this is about the future of the character, because we've already developed a lot about Johnny Thunder. We've seen his father, we've seen his family, we've seen his friends and their relationships and how they interact when they go on adventures and things like that. But keep in mind that uh, back when we made Seeker of Marco Polo, we had no idea we would be here where we are now with Project U, and now we have the full cinematic universe where now you have these giant theater movies, but they now exist in the same universe as like Forest of Fear and The Adventures of Lego Man and Alpha Team Mission Deep Jungle and all these other films. So what do you like to see? What, so you personally, what do you want to see with the future of Giant Thunder now that it exists in the same universe as all these other characters. I think, I mean, we've seen the Johnny Thunder family dynamic uh, play out and come full circle with his father and everything that we saw in the third movie. I think what I'd like to see Johnny Thunder now is it kind of expand on those relationships. Not obviously within his family, but also all these people he's going to be meeting and interacting with and build off of that. Because Johnny is a very... He is a very much a person looking out for the little guy, looking out for the person in need. And I, I look forward to seeing him become the hero that I, I truly believe he doesn't know that he is. Like, he's not just a treasure hunter. You know, he's been part of a, a revolution. You know, he, he's inter, intervened in a lot of bad stuff. And I, I look forward to seeing him be that, that all around good guy that he is. And thank you for joining me, Daniel.
Oh, it was a pleasure to be here. And that concludes another episode of Backstage Showcase. I hope that you liked the double episodes that we had today to kind of make up for the fact that I missed having an episode two weeks ago. But um, just to uh, let you know that if you enjoyed this episode, go over to the Mustache Maniacs Film Co. YouTube channel where you can check out all the other episodes as well as all of our different movies. And be sure to also check out our entire network, like our wiki, our official website, our press room, our Facebook page, and so much more. So, before we go, one last thing. Uh, Daniel, do you want to impart a farewell to the fans? Yes, um, I want to thank you all for uh, listening to the, the interview tonight. Um, I really want to thank everyone who supported this uh, Mustache Manics film post since day one. Oh, I, It's hard to believe that you know our Giant Thunder came out <laughs> nine years ago. And people still watch it, still post about it. Um, I never, never in a million years that I think it was going to be more than just this, you know, a little film that we made to entertain ourselves, and that was it. So again, thank you all for for listening and continuing to support the Sesame Street. And I'll see you next time for another exciting episode of Backstage Showcase.